Greetings everyone and welcome to my vlog and today's vlog on the 12th of July 2013 is going to be about the Vampire Legacy Ankh and this piece is an important piece in the vampire culture because it is, pro it is probably one of the most famous bladed Ankhs which is uh, the bladed Ankh is a symbol of the vampire culture now where did the bladed Ankh come from? It actually came from the movie called The Hunger in 1982, as far as I know, and that was with David Bowie, and the vampires in that movie would have a bladed ankh, and they'd remove the sheath, and because they didn't have fangs, and they would cut their victims with it. Now, in 1995, I was in a little shop in the East Village called Skin Crawl, for anybody that remembers that shop, and I was, like, looking around at all the jewelry, and I saw a version of the ankh from The Hunger. It was much larger, because the one in the movie was about this big, but this was about this large. I haven't seen that piece in years, but what had happened was it was made of, um, I think it was made of silver and it had an exacto knife blade. And I thought, wow, that would be a really interesting thing to create. And over the next year, I kind of worked on various versions, uh, designs of my own, and I never came up with anything that really f touched me. And until uh, September of 1996, I was at the Baroness, uh, her event called the Royal Amusements, and I met a gentleman named Dejrenin. And D was a master metal manipulator. And he had all these cool rings and he had his own fangs. And he was a perfect gentleman. What an interesting character. I was like, maybe this is the guy that can do my, my pendant. So we talked about it a little bit. And then the following week, 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 we met up and we went over some of the ideas. And what I asked him for was something about two to three inches long. And it, this is what he actually came up with. And it had a, would have a stone representing your uh, level of initiation within the family. And on the back, it would um, be kind of like grooved a little bit. It would have fangs on it and a curved blade because I have a great love of ancient Middle Eastern legends such as the 1001 Arabian Nights. And I did live in Dubai for a little bit. And it was really cool. And I loved the scimitar. That was always my favorite uh, kind of sword. So D finally came up with a design that I got to have presented to me at his house in 1997, in January of that year. And finally, he delivered the actual final piece 10 months after the conception of it in 1997, in July 2nd, before I went to the Dracula Centennial in Los Angeles, which was a celebration of the 100th anniversary of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now, I wanted to present the Ankh to Raymond T. McNally, who wrote a book called In Search of Dracula, which connected Vlad Tepish with the Dracula myth, and I thought that was really great. And I, I wore the pendant, D gave it to me in a little uh, wooden coffin, and I traded him, of course I covered his fees as a, as a designer, and I also traded him these violet contact lenses, which he became famous for in our party's Long Black Veil. Now, the uh, Legacy Ankh uh, was originally going to have a sheath put on it, and that would represent your clan or bloodline, and then you could also decor it with a mask, which would represent your halo. So if you walk around New York, you'll see some older members of the vampire community with all these additions on their Ankh, and that is kind of their customization for communicating what they do. Now the stone colors represent white for a fledgling or a new person, um, red for a Kalme, which is a kind of like a brother, sister, um, dedicant of the family, uh, then there's also purple, which represents an elder or adept, and then black, as you can see me wearing, for a magister, which is a member of the Sanguinarium Inner Circle. Each stone color would represent things, but however, people put their own stone colors in there over the years. And the various uh, inspirations on the Ankh were made. D made a couple other Ankhs for different uh, groups, but they were never uh, really widespread uh, outside of New York City. Now, people know this is the Legacy Ankh, and why is it called the Legacy Ankh? Because it represents the legacy of the Sabretooth family. It's not exclusive anymore for the Sabretooth family, because originally it was only for my Fang clients. However, uh, people started copying it, making their own variations on it, and it became important to release it publicly, because um, that way people could get it from the source and the original mold, which wouldn't allow them to copy it as easy. It would, it would kind of prevent people and keep the sacredness of the piece. Now, you can see the original mold here. Um, here's the uh, made from the original piece. And you can see on the back here the Drennan's name and various things. And also the weight and information. Now, what, what they would do is you would take this mold, you inject it, and they'd make a, a wax. And then that would be put into a kelm, which would be uh, replaced with silver. 
So that's kind of how you make jewelry. The vampire legacy ankh has become basically the symbol of the vampire culture, uh, or the, the kind of the original piece that really launched everything back in 1997, 1998, and is still one of the most coveted pieces. And you can find it at the Endless Night Emporium at Endless Night endlessnight.com. Now, the original concept was to create uh, this Ankh not only with the symbolism involved, but it would also represent various veils or traditions in the vampire culture. Uh, the example veils include mystery, romance, magic, apotheosis, immortality, love, loyalty, uh, dance, creativity, music, and so on and so on. These are PowerPoints of the vampire mythology. And I actually put them together, finally, over the years, into a book called Vampire Virtues, The Red Veils. Uh, and that is a collection of different things. You can also get it in German and I think this is here is French. Um, you could also get it in Spanish as well. I made it important to make it available uh, in different languages so it could really communicate what the Ankh meant. So the Ankh is not just a little uh, design and uh, you know there's all, many urban legends about the piece like it was made in nickel silver and that is true but not in Drennan's design. This is called the D edition. It was made in nickel silver in the Alchemy Gothic pewter version. So there's a big uh, urban legend going around that that was just done, and this is the Alchemy Gothic one that you can buy at alchemygothic.com, and on the back is the sanguinarium.net, which is our social private social network information. So there's a little bit of history of the Vampire Legacy Ankh. Uh, this one is made in sterling silver. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. So check us out at endlessnight.com for the Emporium if you want to get your own piece. Uh, you can also uh, check my blog out at fathersebastian.com, and if you want more information on the Sanguinarium, which we have an outer circle with a bunch of articles and information at sanguinarium.net. Until next time.